Hi! Welcome to Opening the Vault. Following Mickey's footsteps. Where we watch every Disney animated feature in chronological order. Today we're going to be watching 1949's The, the Adventures, Adventures of Ichabod, Ichabod and Mr. Mr. Toad. Toad. This is the sixth and final package film. So we're going, we've gone through all of them. We did it. The production on Ichabod and Mr. Toad started much earlier. Mm -hmm. After the release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Walt was approached with The Wind in the Willows. Initially, Walt was reluctant to produce it. He thought it would be too corny. He bought the rights in 1939 anyway. He hired the animators from Bambi to start working on Mr. Toad, so it has a bit higher quality. However, because of the war, like many of the projects that are in these package films, Mr. Toad got shelved, and the work stopped, and then it had to find a home later, which is why we have it here. Let us watch The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Let's do it. Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Ichabod. Ichabod and Mr. Toad. All right, that was The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Yes, it was. And it was something. Something. Very... Strange to put them together. Yeah, because they don't really have anything in common. Mr. Toad was is much more, I think, pretty. The backgrounds have a lot more detail. It's much more uh, the Bambi style. It's not mm -hmm. nature, per se, like that. It's The characters are very cartoony, but the settings, everything, are very detailed. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty, mm -hmm. um, and it's just a fun like romp. Versus uh, Ichabod is much more simply animated, definitely on that later budget, and it's a dark story. Yeah. So we'll start talking about the second in the title, Ichabod and Mr. Toad, though it's the first piece, Mr. Toad. Yeah. They package these together with kind of a, a very light containment of it being in a library, so you have like a live action panning through books. And starts off with Basil Rathbone narrating, talking about crazy characters in literature. And uh, he brings up Mr. Toad and then the camera goes into the book. And uh, so it's a better framing than the kind of very strange stuff from Melody Time. I mean, because, yeah. yeah, it's in a library. They're talking about literature. And yeah. these are both stories from... Literature. From literature. So, <laughs> so it makes sense. And then Basil Rathbone, who I know from PBS doing the old Sherlock Holmes. He's the deerstalker hat Sherlock that's very famous. That's Basil Rathbone. Then everyone knows. And everyone knows, and he does the narration for the intro to Mr. Toad and the Mr. Toad story. Then we go into the book. It shows Toad Hall and how Toad Hall is this very beautiful building that all the animals of the area and the village are very proud of Toad Hall. Toad himself is a bit wacky and just does things and doesn't think about how much things cost. And so he is very much in debt. And so his good friend, Mick Badger. Worst Scottish accent ever. He's ever. got a pretty bad Scottish <laughs> it's accent. Awful. It's uh, so bad. Mick Badger's trying to help his books, and there's human creditors that are pounding on the door. There's lots of humans in. in the cartoon for yeah. how many animals are the main characters. And, and Toad, Thaddeus, J. Thaddeus Toad Esquire, I am bounding as right now. He's a toad, and it's unlike Jiminy Cricket where he doesn't really resemble a cricket. Toad looks like a toad. Mm -hmm. Badger is a badger. Mole is a mole. Rat mm -hmm. is a rat. Um, but anthropomorphized. But they're still small. And so the humans are very large. The humans are human-sized. And it seems like the architecture is kind of designed for humans. Which is hysterical when, spoilers, Toad goes to court, and it's people court. Yeah. But there's animals witness as witnesses, and, so, and he's on trial. It's very silly. But it's fun. It is. Um, we're back to, once again, that Victorian aesthetic. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Edwardian uh, era, 1908-ish. Um, so any PBS fans, again, if you're a fan of period pieces, costume dramas, as they're called in the UK, Downton Abbey, anything of that nature, you're gonna like Mr. Toad. It's kind of a very absurd setting, more of a P.G. Wodehouse type of thing, mm -hmm. where Toad, while foolish and makes bad decisions, he's a, not full of ill intent. He's a good guy. He's just kind of crazy. Yes, there was one point 
when we were watching Mr. Toad that I thought of an episode of Jeeves and Wooster. <laughs> yeah. So it's very much in that vein, it but is. for children. Yes. He's based on the characters from The Wind and the Willows. Based on the synopsis on Wikipedia, Mr. Toad stays fairly true, at least to the characters and the initial story that Toad is a little bit wacky and gets easily obsessed with new fads and then drops them as soon as something else comes along. And so he's very frivolous and a little bit arrogant. It starts with the Merrily On Our Way song, which... It's a great song. It's a great song. Just like having a good time, going out. We're not going anywhere in particular. It's just about going out and having a good time. So you have Toad and his friend Cyril, who's a horse, so... A cockney horse. Cockney horse. His muzzle is kind of a darker shade than the rest of his head, so that's kind of like a a five o'clock shadow (laughs) on him. Uh, but it's fun because it shows that Toad is not class, isn't a classist right. person. He he uh, is of the aristocracy, but his like best friend is this Cockney horse who calls him Govna, and Govna. Cyril even remarks that Rat is a is a bit stuffy, um, and, and he is. Uh, but he's That's very stuffy. Yeah, but they're still friends, and uh, Toad's still gonna be friends with all of them. He doesn't care, so that's. That's nice. Thus ends the tale of Toad, and they think he's reformed, and they're all proud that he's better, and then he is obs- has a new obsession, which is airplanes! Yay! Airplanes! And Cyril's with him, and they're having a great time. I've never seen a horse on a plane before. Nope. Very but, exciting. So it's just like, oh, Toad. You know, oh, Toad. That's how it ends. And then uh, it pulls out of the book, and Basil Rathbone's narration is done, and suddenly... Bing Crosby's there. Because in... Bing. He's like, well, I know there's lots of good stories in England, but we have good ones here in the States as well. And you're like, what? And so it goes like through the bookshelves into another section of the library with American literature. Yay. Um, and goes to the story of Ichabod Crane. Which is based on the legend of Sleepy Hollow. It's not what it's not something I would read to my kids. You know, before bedtime. <laughs> right. Um, it is praised as being, like, scary, but still family-friendly enough for children. True. So it has that, and I would say that's very true, because really the scary parts are only at the end. Right. They started production on this in 1946, thinking it was going to be a feature film, but... Then they realized they didn't quite have enough material to make it a feature film, since it is a short tale. Yeah. So they decided, oh, we'll just put it with something, and chose Mr. Toad. For reasons unknown. Reasons unknown. (laughs) The animation is much more simple. Mm -hmm. Um, The uh, character design is kind of reusing things we've seen before. Definitely noticed with, is her name Katrina? Yeah. The Ichabod's love interest, or the lady he's trying to court Mm -hmm. in the story. Uh, Her animation is clearly directly lifted from Slewfoot Sue from the Pecos Bill short. It's very so very sexy. Small waist, big hips, big boobs. Almost too sexy. Very yeah. very oval face with the like China doll features. Yeah. She has a lot of attitude, which is fun. She's funny. I mean she knows what she's doing. She's yeah. like, oh, these men are all pawing all over for each other for my attention. I'm gonna use them. Ha 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 carry yeah. my packages. None of the characters actually have voice. It's mm-hmm. all just narration from Bing Crosby. So uh, that's a, a money saver. Mm-hmm. The animation style is a money saver. I'm pretty sure they just took Slewfoot Sue and just... Put her in a dress. Put her in a dress <laughs> uh, for certain scenes or just reuse the face. Hilariously, the narration is that Ichabod, while she's very attractive, he seems to be more interested in the fact that she's wealthy. Than the fact that she's pretty. Yeah. Which... As a kid, I remember watching Ichabod, and I always felt sorry for Ichabod because he's so goofy, and he's just a school teacher, and he liked to read, and he was very, you know, proper-ish, and the big burly men kind of made fun of him and stuff, and so I always felt really bad for him, because I was like, oh, they're picking on him because he's, like, scrawny and dorky, but after watching it now, I'm like, no, he's just a gold digger. The villain's name is Brom Bones. Uh, he's kind of a proto Gaston. He is character. He's very got the so. big jaw, and he's very ripped and muscular, and he gets along with all the guys. And he's 
going after the girls. And oddly, he sings, like, the best song, mm -hmm. well, which Gaston sings a good song, song, too, but it's like a happy song, and it's telling the tale of the spooky, headless horseman. And Well, but on the other hand, you couldn't really make that song spooky, because then it wouldn't be kid-friendly. Right. It needs to be kind of happy, because the scene immediately following the happy song about the headless horseman is very spooky. Yeah. And I remember being kind of creeped out by it as a kid. So it's good that you couldn't make the song really spooky and scary and then have a spooky scene and a sort of ambiguously spooky ending. Yeah. It wouldn't be as kid friendly. And it's Bing Crosby singing it. Right. So it's real fun and it's <laughs> He's gonna get trouble. Yeah, and you can dance to it and move around. So I see the appeal. It's just kind of weird that he's the like bad guy. Like if Ichabod was singing the song, you'd be like, Oh, well, this is our protagonist singing this kind of upbeat song. So then Ichabod gets freaked out and then the Headless Horseman shows up and chases it's him. chasing him. It's scary and spooky, and you've probably seen it. Mm -hmm. With Ichabod, yeah. it's, he's very like bumbling as he's trying to escape, and it's it's goofy enough for it to still be kind of spooky for little kids. I guess it's maybe it's more of a like Laurel and Hardy meet the Wolfman type of a scenario. Yes. The ending, it's like. Does he get his? Does he get killed or like they show him with a family? But then the people of Sleepy Hollow don't believe that. After the Headless Horseman throw, chucks the flaming pumpkin at him, and then it cuts to the next morning, and all that's found of Ichabod is his hat, and just you see hoof prints, hoof prints from his horse, and it says that there were, you know, he, there was no trace of him, and they say, oh, there were rumors that he went off and married a wealthy widow and is living happily ever after. But that the people of Sleepy Hollow don't necessarily believe that. And they think he was spirited away by the Headless Horseman. And that's it. That's the end. It wraps so, up. But I, I don't think that the rumors are that he went off and married. I don't think that's in the original story. No, I think he actually gets killed in the I original think, story. I think the Headless Horseman kills him and takes his head. Yeah. So they, they Disney-fy it a they little Disney bit. They Disney-fied it. I mean, you have but to, it, though. If, yeah. But it's still ambiguous. Right. And then Bing Crosby's like, well, I guess that's it. I'm a little spooked out. I'm going to go home. It's like, very strange. And the end. Boom. Yeah, like, the end. Storybook closes. Pans out. Library light goes out. The end. You want to watch these? With us? Yeah. These are both short. They're a total little over an hour. Mr. Toad is great, and it's, it's always fun. kids will really like it. And It's very goofy. I remember liking it as a kid. But if you're uh, like getting ready, geared up to go to Disneyland, and you want to watch some of the features or animation things that inspire rides, you should watch Mr. Toad, and then you can see how different it is. But you get to see the <laughs> characters like brought to full size. Which is fun. In the ride. So that's really great. And so. Toad Hall in Disneyland is really cute. So if you're a PBS fan, if you're a British comedy fan or any of that, you'll enjoy Mr. Toad. As for Crane, Ichabod Crane, uh, it's all right. I mean, a, a compilation of spooky things at Halloween. Yeah. Great. But otherwise, I don't think it's... It, they're definitely not the same level. Oh, no. Not the same quality. Mm -hmm. So, Toad, I really enjoy and will happily watch any time. I like Toad. Ichabod Crane. Yeah. It's only okay. Yeah. Next week, we're returning to the feature-length full-on narrative with Yay. Cinderella. Cinderella, Cinderella. You guys can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and on our website, openingthevault.com. All those links are here -ish. Somewhere. Click on my bow tie to subscribe to the channel. So let us know in the comments below, would you trade your house for a motor car? Thanks for watching, and as they say at the Disney parks, have a magical day.